angle of elevation and angle of depression. <clears throat> now in trigonometry, uh, there can be a situation where angle of elevation and depression or depression would be given. Okay, now what is angle of elevation? Now this is the definition or this is basically what angle of elevation is. When you're looking up from the horizontal, so angle of elevation is measured up from the horizontal. That means from this point, this P is the point and this is the horizontal. This is what I mean by horizontal. And there is an instrument by which you can measure these angles. And if you're looking up this angle, from this point, if you're looking up at this tree, the angle this measures is called angle of elevation. So let me name it as AOE. Okay, and angle of depression is the opposite of that from the horizontal. This is the horizontal. You're looking down, and this angle is called angle of depression, AOD. So this angle that you measure is called angle of depression, and you're looking up, so angle of elevation. So let's take an example. <coughs> Pema has, has secured a good position on a balcony, balcony 14 meters above the ground. So this is Hema, 14 meters above the ground. So this is the ground. Okay, ground. Okay, when the per when the parade stops, the angle of depression of the float below him is 72 degrees. So this is the horizontal. So let me draw the horizontal. Let me insert a line. So this is the horizontal. So this is the horizontal. Let me make it darker. So so this angle is 72 degrees. This angle is 72 degrees. <coughs> so if you have learned parallel lines uh, and angles in parallel lines and a transversal, uh, you can understand that if this angle is 72 degrees, this angle is also going to be 72 degrees. They are called alternate angles or Z angles. They are called alternate angles or Z angles. So this is the angle of depression, AOD. That is from, this is the horizontal, this is the horizontal, and you're looking down. So when Hema looks down at the float, the angle of depression is 72 degrees. So let's name, so this is a triangle. So this is triangle A, B, C. C is the float. And this is a right angle. To calculate to one decimal how far the float is from the base. So you want to find BC. So let's consider this as X. So the same process, label. So this is the angle. This is the right angle. So angle, this is the opposite. And this is the adjacent. So now you do, to find X, you have to use TOA because O and A, so draw the two-hour triangle, and you want to find A, so if you, if you cover up A, I hope you can cover up yourself, if you cover up A, you can see O divided by T, so you can say A is O divided by T, T stands for 10, of the angle. So let's say that is theta. So this is theta. And now you have to substitute what is O. O is x is equal to, sorry, A is x. O is 14 divided by, uh, divided by 10, 72. So get your calculators out. So where is my calculator? This is my calculator. So I have to first change my settings. My settings by default goes to radian. So I have to change the degrees. And then I will go, what was O? O is 14 divided by 1072. That's your answer, 4.58. So you want to write in 1 dp, so 4.5.
the answer is 4.5 meters okay and let's finish off with this next question how far is the float from hemi so this is this is what you want to find so this is the this distance this is what you want to find so you know this you can use Sokato or also Pythagoras okay so let's say this is say y so using Pythagoras I can say y squared is equal to 14 squared plus x squared which is 14 squared 14 squared plus 4.5 squared so let's use the calculator to figure this out and then we'll find the square root so it is 14 squared plus 4.5 squared which is 216.25 216.25 and now you have to find the square root so y is square root of 216.25 and one thing that you should understand this y should be greater than 14 and 4.5 okay so so let me do shift square root of 216.25 which is 14.7 okay so the answer is 14 14.7 meters